Hi, my name is John Davis. This is Intro to Communication 101, Speech 4. My audience with me today is my friend Alicia, her husband Nick, my friend Ashley, and my wife Brooke, who is holding the camera. Today I'm going to talk about whether or not there should be a policy in place on getting your cats and dogs spayed and neutered. With that said, I'll get right into the discussion and the argument. Everyone has seen The Price is Right, right? Did you ever notice at the end of each episode when Bob Barker, or in today's case, Drew Carey, reminds everyone to have their pets spayed and neutered in order to help control the pet population? Well, he is on to something. Whether you're an animal lover like me, and you want to end the suffering of homeless animals, or you're concerned about the money that is spent each year on euthanasia or the endangerment of to wildlife, you would probably agree with me. Spaying and neutering our cats and dogs is crucial to help control overpopulation, county and city costs, suffering of innocent animals, and endangerment of wildlife that is a natural part of our ecosystem. Although I am not an expert on this topic, I am concerned about the suffering of innocent animals, and after having done considerable research, I am much in favor of there being a policy in place, and I am sure after you hear what I have to say, you will be too. According to the American Bird Con Conservancy of Washington, D.C., cats and dogs are not a natural part of our ecosystem. Cats in particular were brought over from England more than 4,000 years ago for companionship and to help keep mice out of people's homes. Yet, because of surplus mating of non-neutered pets that are allowed to go outside or have been thrown out by their owners, millions are out there fending for themselves. They operate in constant crisis mode, faced with ongoing life-death situations every day. Cats especially are killing hundreds of millions of birds and wildlife each year. Not only that, but they are spreading disease to wildlife as well. Here we have a picture showing a cat with its bird in its mouth. The amount of suffering, threats to naturally occurring wildlife, and unnecessary costs to humans creates a need for change. Someone needs to put a stop to the fact that over 4 million cats and dogs are put down each year, or that thousands are brought into shelters each and every day. Most of these animals could create wonderful pets for people. However, there are just simply too many of them for it to even be possible to find homes for them all. In order to make a change, People need to spay and neuter their pets, adopt instead of breed, and support local animal shelters and TNR groups. Here's a picture saying, don't breed or buy while animal shelters die. First of all, if someone is going to take on the responsibility of owning a pet, he or she should also be able to take on the responsibility of the small added expense of having that pet spayed or neutered. There are even places other than veterinary clinics where people with little money to spend can take their pets there to be fixed for very low cost, if not for free. Secondly, with the massive overpopulation in animal shelters all over the country, it is important to adopt rather than to breed or buy. Most of the animals in these shelters would make perfectly good pets for someone. They need shelter, love, and companionship, what most everyone looks for in a pet. So why breed new ones? Down here we have a picture of a new clinic that just opened in North Carolina um, that does uh, spay and neutering for very little cost, if not for free. I'm not saying they should make animal breeding illegal or that people should not be allowed to have a breeding license. I am simply advocating the decision to adopt a pet as opposed to buying from a breeder. Finally, shelters need our support, whether financially with donations, volunteer work, or supplies. TNR groups are also needing support and volunteers because they are trying to accomplish a good thing as well. They trap feral animals, sterilize them, and then release them back into the wild or find homes for them. They do not kill the animals, for this does nothing to stop overpopulation. Sterilization prevents future breeding and therefore is the greatest long-term solution to the overpopulation. 
Spaying and neutering domestic animals is the most practical solution to their overpopulation and suffering. But everyone needs to be on board. If we care about the cause, we can make a change. It is up to the people of this world. Who wouldn't want to cut back costs for animal shelters? In retrospect, it's cutting back on costs for everyone. And why wouldn't we want to end the suffering of homeless pets around the world? Or the endangerment of wildlife that is being hunted by animals that are not even a natural part of our ecosystem? Who wouldn't want to slow down the spread of disease to endangered wildlife if they could? Even for someone who doesn't care, at least he could agree that spaying, neutering, or domestic pets is the first step to forming a solution. Although having a policy in place to force pet owners to spay and neuter their pets may not be very realistic, it would probably be nearly impossible to regulate. It certainly makes a lot of sense in getting to the bottom of a solution, though. That is the end of my argument. Thank you to my audience for listening. Thank you to my camera person for videotaping this. We'll see you guys for speech five. Thank you.